Uh, hello, thank you all for coming. Uh, my research is on dimorphous effective response towards non-human young and its implications on ecosystem regulation, or why are baby animals so cute? <laughs> So the cuteness of baby animals has been well studied by scientists. Looking at baby animals triggers a nurturant love response. Uh, it makes us happier, it makes us friendlier, um, it makes us more relaxed, and it makes us more gentle. But there's no clear evolutionary reason why this should be the case. When we see baby animals, I think we're all familiar. We like them, we want to care for them, but caring for another species doesn't help pass on our genes. So why has this behavior been selected for? Well, the answer you'll find in the establishment literature is the concept of the Kinchen Schema, or baby schema, <laughs> uh, developed by Conrad Lawrence, the guy who got followed by geese. Lawrence proposed essentially that it's not that baby animals are cute. We find baby humans very cute. There's obvious reasons we've evolved to want to care for baby humans. And there are certain features like large eyes and a small nose that we find cute even on animals. So from an evolutionary perspective, baby animals aren't cute. Babies are so cute that some of this effect is accidentally applied. There's one key problem with this theory. Babies aren't that cute. <laughs> Here's a picture of a baby human. Uh, baby humans are okay at best. Contrast that with a baby harp seal. <laughs> Much more appealing, and some of the cutest features are the non-human ones, the whiskers and snout and general fuzziness. So we need to explain unique baby animal cuteness, and I think the key here is understanding uh, that the cuteness response is not a purely positive one. It's time to talk about cute aggression. <laughs> Another real and scientifically studied phenomenon, but also one I think that we're all familiar with. When exposed to too much cuteness, rather than a positive reaction, humans respond with, it's so cute I can't handle it. Uh, it's so cute that I hate it. It's so cute that I want to squeeze it until it explodes. I want to eat it. I must find it and kill it and eat it. Look at that stupid face. Look at how cute it is. It's so dumb. It's the worst. So we can see that this is a dimorphous response. <laughs> at low levels of cuteness, we're calm. At high levels of cuteness, we're angry. Uh, and I think we can clearly extrapolate. Our prehistoric ancestors uh, at extreme levels of cuteness would be <laughs> thrown into a murderous rage and want to destroy that which was too cute. Therefore, I propose cuteness is an ecosystem stabilizer. <laughs> It's beneficial for humans to live in a stable environment, which means constant populations of certain key organisms. So if you're a prehistoric hunter and you see uh, a single wolf puppy, you might be tempted to attack it otherwise, you know that it'll grow up to be dangerous, but you won't because it's simply too cute. But if you're out and you see 50 or 100 wolf puppies, each of them cuter and fluffier than the last, at a certain point, you'll lose your mind and think it's too cute, I can't even, and this fragile ecosystem can't even either. Psychotically murder the puppies, keep the population stable over the long term. Uh, now this theory, I think, is, is ironclad, so let's see how it applies in reality. To do this, we wanted to find what the cutest baby animals are. We performed a literature search of previous research on this topic. <laughs> We then had many rankings of cute baby animals. Uh, we aggregated them using the robust rank aggregation algorithm described by Kolda et al. for gene list integration. Rank aggregation is a fascinating piece of mathematics, and choosing this algorithm had real scientific reasons, uh, but I don't have time to describe them because I wanted more pictures of baby animals. We ranked 46 unique baby animals. The definitive cutest baby animal is the kitten, and then at the bottom of this list of 46 is the baby dick dick. These animals are all very cute. Some of them are only cute as babies, though, whereas some of them remain cute throughout their lifespan. We found a definitive ranking of adult animal cuteness, Live Science's list of the 500 cutest animals. Definitive because it's really long and has the word science in it. <laughs> then we re-ranked by the distance between baby and adult cuteness, and here is what we found. Uh, animals that are cute as babies but not adults are generally large, dangerous, and apex or near apex animals with few natural predators like tigers, polar bears, and elephants. Uh, whereas animals that remain cute are low trophic, low on the food chain, uh, and annoying pests like raccoons or hamsters. 
So the implication, all these animals are somewhat annoying. We'd have reason to want to kill them if they weren't so cute. And at large numbers, animals low on the food chain have a cap on their total population. If they're too numerous, we'll lose our minds and kill them all. <laughs> Whereas these apex animals have a rate limiter on their growth, since we only go after their babies. And apex animals are the key to ecosystem regulation, since normally they aren't uh, regulated from predation from the top down. Let's model this with a simple Lotka Volterra model. <laughs> Uh, standard prey-predator relationship that I also don't have time to describe for the same reasons, but you can see that this is generally unstable, and at some point, one of these species is going to drop below replacement level, and this ecosystem will be ruined. But if we implement the arbitrary cap on the prey population and a rate limit on predators, it's immediately stabilized. Human beings can thrive in this environment. Now, there's plenty of implications to this theory, uh, but I'll leave you with this. I think this could be the human evolutionary niche. We've evolved to be able to predate on almost any animal, but we often choose not to, and this explains how humans have thrived throughout the Earth in many environments and how many ecosystems thrived along with us for thousands of years. And that's a lovely way to look at the history of humanity, that our great intelligence was not used to destroy our environment, but to nurture it, made slightly less poetic because it means our ancestors often psychotically slaughtered thousands of innocent baby animals. <laughs>